is, is the word taqwa. So the ayat states, O mankind, worship your Lord, Lord who created you and those before you, so that you may acquire taqwa. So in this second part of our course, we are going to be exploring more about the concept of taqwa and as well as looking into the sermon of Najul Balaga that we looked at last week. So to start off, a tricky thinking question, another one for you. Does anyone remember what kutbah of Najul Balaga did we focus on last week? Does anybody remember what that kutbah number was? We have one guess for 83. Any other guesses for what that kutbah was that we got to explore so many wonderful things in? Excellent. Looks like all of you have such a wonderful memory. We looked at kutbah number 83. And inshallah, today we are going to continue exploring more of this wonderful kutbah. Excellent. That's right. It was kutbah gara. Very good. Good remembering. So before we get started on the next slide, let's look a little bit at how beautiful this verse is from Surah Baqarah, Ayat 21. So in this verse, we're able to learn how the worship of Allah is what helps us as humans to be able to reach high levels. When we have this strong worship in Allah, it helps us to be calm, soothes us and elevates and enriches us. The Holy Prophet has said, the best of mankind is he who adores worship and embraces it. He loves it with the heart, performs it with the body, and makes time for it. Then he is not greatly concerned about the world, whether he is in difficulty or in ease. See this beautiful hadith of the Holy Prophet that tells us of the beauty in worshiping Allah. And many and scholars have said that worship has been described in three stages. The first stage is when we have our worship that is correct, when the believer looks after the necessary things and conditions, such as making sure we are in a pure state, we are following the correct method, the time. Then the second form of worship is worship that is accepted. This is worship that is done with taqwa, with God consciousness and or piety. Does anybody want to guess what the third stage of worship is? Any guesses on what that could be? We already talked about how the second stage is one that is done with taqwa, or God consciousness, what could possibly be the third stage of worship? Any guesses? Could it be? It could be higher than this stage. Very good guess. Quran, excellent. Thank you for sharing. Any other guesses? This is a tricky question. Give. Good. Intellectual namaz, a class to Allah. Really, really good guesses that are coming. The Quran, good. Very good. I can tell everyone's doing a lot of thinking when you're coming up with this, which is so wonderful. Knowledge, intelligent. The third stage of this worship is worship that achieves perfect. Perfection. Very good guesses. All of you were so close. So the worship that achieves perfection. This is the worship that is done with the qualities of awareness, awe, love, and privacy. This is where we want to reach our worship to reach that level of high perfection. So now, now what I want you to do is reflect upon an act of worship that you do. 
and think about which one of the three categories you would fall under, which of the three stages. Would that act of worship that you do be the worship that is correct? Or would it fall under the stage that is accepted? Or do you think it's that worship that's achieving perfection? It's a little bit of thinking. And this is something you can do throughout days and think about your worship and which stage you want it to go towards. Do you want it to just stop at the stage that is correct or the stage where it is just accepted? Or do you really want to strive to get that worship to one that is close to achieving perfection and you have that desire to get it to that highest stage? That's right. One of the actions that we could monitor this is also for our namaz. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. So this is something to think about. Thank you as well for sharing that. The first and second stage. Thank you. Towards the third one. Excellent. Love how you're reflecting on that. It comes to the action of fasting. Very good. Excellent. First or the second stage. Good. Very good reflecting. Sakka is another one that we could do this with. with. Excellent. Good. So when the human being, we are encouraged to worship God, there are a few, there are three key things that we realize when we are worshiping Allah. The first is realizing the blessings of Allah, who is the creator, who nurtures and provides us with anything. And basically the need, the neediness that we all have for many things that we need in our life. And the third one is understanding the fruits of worship. So excellent. Very good. As well as reflecting on prayer for the stages. Very good. So now we are going to continue. So just a few reminders, which it looks like everyone's doing such a wonderful job already at following. For those that were not here last week few things to make sure you don't include personal information, don't make fun of others, and all discussions are relating to our course. So excellent. So first, we're going to start a little bit with a recap to remind ourselves of what we learned last week. So to start off, would everyone like to share one point that they remember from what they learned from last week's class? Anything that you remember, maybe something that you try to incorporate within your week. It's a good reminder for those that are here and also for those that were not able to join us last week. Allah has blessed us with the ability to hear and see. Excellent. The story about the late man. Excellent. The part that we looked at. Very good. He is the all giver. Excellent. Allah gave us so many things when we were little. Very good. Excellent. That's right. We went back and looked at the part of the kutba that started when we were just born. And then how we got to where we are today. Very good. Although Allah has given us that's right. We went through some of the different that he's given us within our body, within ourself. That's right. We also talked about the story, the boat that the boat story. Very good. We reflected on some of the qualities of Allah within the class. Now he has given us so many things. It was everything we need and how we should use the thing he has blessed us with. Very good. So it's excellent. Everyone remembers what we talked about last week. So a quick little mindfulness, one minute little reflective exercise based on what we did last week to really make sure that that information has sunk within us. So to start off, last week we talked about, as many of you had mentioned, all the different blessings that Allah has given, especially within even our body parts. So I want you to take a few seconds to think about one body part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. How can you use that one body part that you identify to gain closeness to Allah? What actions can you do with that body part? What intention can you have when doing it to reach that closeness? 
Excellent. So it's like some people have chosen the brain, the ear, the hands, brains. Excellent. The hand by hearing someone. That is all very good. The hand, the legs, nose. We use it to smell. Very good. Good. So, because these muscles are so many different body parts that sometimes maybe we want to start with one and then work our way so that our whole body we used to gain closeness to Allah. With our eyes, we can read the Holy Quran. That's right. Our eyes, the heart, the heart, legs to walk to the mosque. Excellent. Very good reflections, everyone. Hearing the mouth to speak. So when we speak, we want to make sure we speak good words. And that's something we're also going to be looking a little bit more at in this class as well. As well. Our hands to give charity. Excellent. And for all these actions that people are saying, what they're doing with their body part, the first thing is also to make sure we have that good intention, that we're not doing any of these actions to show off or for other people. We are doing it to gain closeness to Allah in our intention. Very good. So you have the tongue, the mouth to read the Quran, eyes, yay, mouth to read the Quran and speak the truth. Excellent. Functioning body. Brain for smartness, very good. Good, so wonderful thinking and reflections. Now the ability to gain knowledge, very good. Continue. So last week, we also was, there was an optional activity for people to that could do that involved creating a bookmark, a reflection affirmation bookmark. So thank you for all those that submitted your bookmarks. There were some amazing submissions. So today I'd like to share three, that, three beautiful bookmarks that people had sent in. And these three did such an amazing job that even if for those that didn't get a chance to, to complete that bookmark, these are all three beautiful ones that can be an inspiration to you all that you can all take a look at because they did an amazing job. If we didn't get a chance to do that last, we could also welcome to work on the bookmarks this week. And maybe you'll get more points from today's class to include in your bookmarks as well. All three are really, really beautiful and very well done. So within the bookmark, it involved writing down, I can, and then what you can do and what you will do. They're beautiful that you can take a few seconds to look at and use to inspire you. Yes, inshallah for those that that missed the bookmark and at the end of the class inshallah you can send the link for the bookmark so that way you can download it on your computer and you can then come do the bookmark that's right they are all very beautiful and are very nice so now before we get into our main sermon that we are going to look at this is such a beautiful sermon 98 from Najul Balaga that talks about God consciousness in such a beautiful way that we're going to start off with. In this sermon, Imam Ali salam says regarding God consciousness, it is a medicine for the sickness of the heart, a light, the darkness of the eye. A consolation for the fear of the heart and an illumination for the gloom of ignorance. So when you think about this beautiful sermon from Najil Balaga, what are some thoughts that come to your mind in the way Imam Ali salam has talked about God consciousness? While you are thinking, the link will, for the bookmark, inshallah, I'll send at the end. And also all the slides as well as the bookmark links 
or will all be available on the website for you to visit the website that will be shared at the end, Me of Learning Islam, where all the presentation links, recordings will also be visible that we'll talk about after. That's right, this beautiful portion of the sermon talks about Allah's powers. Very good. It shows us how powerful this God consciousness is. Because if you think about when we, have, let's say, are sick, have a cold, we take medicine and it helps us to get better. So we wonder, if there's a sickness of the heart, how can we make it better? It tells us that God consciousness is that medicine for the sickness of the heart. Right? It shows us God consciousness is happy people overall. You can do anything. How great he is and how powerful he is. Excellent. Shows us how powerful Allah is. Excellent. And very good guesses. Very good. Very good points. It's very nice how everyone's able to put lots of thought into how, what this sermon is saying and interpreting. Very good. It shows us how powerful Allah is. That's right. Allah is the most powerful. That's correct. Right. So last time we talked about and we used the example of a rocket ship and how we make our faith like a rocket ship that is able to soar high to high levels of faith and iman and have that strong connection with Allah. Today we're going to be thinking about that rocket ship example to help us visualize how we want our faith to go to high levels. So just like a rocket needs enough fuel to reach high levels in outer space, the same way we need to make sure we have a pure intention for our soul to reach high levels of Iman. If we really, really want to be able to gain closeness to Allah, the key ingredient we need to have to be able to do this is that strong God consciousness. That Allah is aware of us, aware of everything we do at all times. That intention we have for our actions is so important. And that is that key fuel, that key ingredient to help us to gain closeness to Allah. That's right, God consciousness is important. Here there's a little picture of saying for our hearts, the key fuel that our heart needs to grow, to become better is that ability to be God conscious. Same way if we think about a car, for a car to be able to go on the road, would it be able to go without any gas? No, it would probably stop in the middle of the road, wouldn't it? It needs that gas to keep going, keep moving. The same way for our heart to be able to continue to grow, to get better, it needs a fuel as well. And that fuel is that God consciousness throughout our lives that is so, so important. Without it, we will not be able for our faith to be able to reach high levels. That's an example that we can use to remind ourselves of how important that fuel is for us to keep going. So now let's look at another part from Kutba 83, the Kutba that we started off with last week. Let's look at another part of it. So in another part of this khutbah, it says, O creatures of Allah, I advise you to have fear of Allah, who has furnished illustrations and who has time for you your lives. Based on that, what do we think taqwa really means? Or what are other key points that you that come to your mind when you read this part of this kutba? Very good to believe in Allah and have God consciousness. Well, it involves God fearing. Good guess. Excellent. It involves the talks about the closeness of Allah. Wow, it is amazing, isn't it? Allah is always watching. That's correct. Have fear of Allah. Very good. I 
essence. So now let's take a look at what does this concept of taqwa really mean? And that will help us to know how important it really is. You have to be afraid of all. You'll see throughout this presentation how we're going to be touching on that and how it's actually going to be how, when we talk about taqwa, how it incorporates part of that. So that's a good question that we're going to get to in the presentation. So we take a closer look at taqwa. Taqwa involves us actively being aware of Allah at all times. It involves protecting ourselves from evil and striving to do good things in our lives. Taqwa is like that initial energy and fuel a rocket needs before it is able to soar to high, high levels in the sky. So based on that definition of taqwa, what are some ways you show taqwa in your life? What are some times when you're doing certain actions in your life that you are always aware of Allah at all times? And you make sure that when you are doing that action, you are not doing any other evil actions with it and you are focusing on doing those good things. That's right. A beautiful example is when you are praying. When you are fasting, excellent. When you are reading the Holy Quran. When you are interacting with others, speaking the truth, you are making dua. Be afraid of us so you don't take advantage of it. It's a good point that you mentioned. That's right. We don't want to keep doing that same bad action again and again and asking for forgiveness when we keep knowing that it's wrong and doing it. So we want to make sure that we always do those good actions. Only when we make a mistake, for forgiveness, and then we try really, really hard to make sure we don't do that same wrong action again. That's right. Important part of it is making sure we don't do act. We're doing good actions without showing off. Excellent. When we are praying. That's right. Even when we're doing something for someone to help them, we need to make sure that our intention is still to please Allah. That's right. When we fear a lot, we want to make sure that when, let's say, we do a bad action, we are very sad and we ask for forgiveness right away because we are sad. We don't like displeasing Allah. That's right. Also, when we're teaching others about the real Islam, that's another example of when you can have taqwa in your life. Very good. It's wonderful to see there are so many different ways that people are, have taqwa within their life when you're giving charity, when you're listening to Allah, encouraging good and forbidding evil. Excellent. When you're thinking about what will happen on the day of judgment, when you are helping the needy. Excellent. Speaking the truth. Jobs. Many different ways that we can have this taqwa. So, so powerful being the poor. That's right, it's a block where we have taqwa at all time. It can help us so that way we are not inclined to do bad things. So, when we are giving sadka, excellent. Wonderful points that people are mentioning. Let's continue. So, now we are going to do a small story about taqwa. So a man came to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and asked if they would get a reward from God if they gave wealth to others to earn fame. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said they would not. He then asked if they would get a reward if they gave wealth to please God and to earn fame. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, replied that God accepts only that which is sincerely for him. And then he recited a verse from Surah Al-Sumer, 
ayah 3 that says, Now surely sincere devotion is due to Allah alone. When you hear this story and this verse, what are some thoughts that are coming to your mind? Fame means you do it so people will recognize you, will come and be like, wow, this person did an amazing job. That Allah is all forgiving. There is one God. Excellent. You must do actions only for the sake of Allah. That is correct. We need to make sure that it's all done just for Allah. We need to make sure that Allah is the focus of life and all else revolves around him. So for those that have been to Omar Hajj, just think about it. It's similar to when the pilgrims go all around the Holy Kaaba. The life of a believer orbits around the center point. And that center point, point is the pleasure of Allah. This is why in another verse of the Holy Quran, Surah 6, Ayat 162, it states, Truly my prayers and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The beautiful verse from Surah 6, 162 reminds us of that importance of doing all our actions for the sake of pleasing Allah. Excellent. I did not do charity for the sake of Allah. He did it to show off. That's correct. Reminds us of how Imam Ali Ali Sam would give food to the poor people without letting them know it was him. Very good. Excellent. Beautiful example shared. So this is really, really important for us to keep in mind. So now for those of you, you can do this either thinking about the answers or if you have a sheet of paper next to you and maybe a pen or a pencil, you can actually write down the answers to these reflection questions. So now a little reflection activity. Think of a deed or any good action that comes to your mind and ask yourself, the following questions about that good deed. It could be something that you did today, yesterday. The first good action that comes to your mind. Now, once you've thought about that good action, few things to ask yourself about that good deed. The first question to ask yourself is, was the praise of other people very important when you did that good action? When you did that action that you thought about, well, did you want people to say, wow, good job, excellent, thank you for doing it, I'm so happy. Was that praise of other people important to you in that good action? That's the first question to ask yourself about that good deed. Now, the second question to ask yourself is, if people had criticized that good action and said, things that were not so positive said, maybe you should have done this or maybe you should have done that. Would you have continued to do that good action? Or would you have stopped and not done it anymore? That's the second question to ask yourself about that good action. And the third question to ask yourself about that good action that you thought about is, were you satisfied with hoping that God is pleased with the deed? Or did you expect something in return? Did you expect after you did that action for something bigger to happen, a bigger reward? Or were you uh, satisfied with hoping that Allah is inshallah pleased with that good action? That is the third question to ask yourself. And by doing this reflective action, this is something that you can maybe do once a day or twice a day, reflecting on some of your good actions and thinking about them in a deeper way. Why you did that good action, what your intention was, this will help you to improve yourself every day. 
if you do these kind of reflection activities and take a look at those good deeds. Because sometimes in the moment when we are doing a good deed, we may think, oh, this is the best deed. I got this big reward. Everybody was so happy. But then when we think about it, was our intention of doing that good deed only for pleasing Allah? Or did we want other people to notice and be happy with that good action? Did we th- and or did we do that action because we wanted a bigger reward? Be it lots of people saying, wow, be it getting lots of money, whatever the reward. Something for us to always think about when we do our actions. And another thing for us to think about is when we do a certain good action, does Allah benefit? Does Allah get bigger, better when we do a good action? Does the good action benefit Allah? Or do we personally benefit from that good action? Who benefits when we do a good action for the sake of pleasing Allah? Does Allah benefit or do we personally benefit? That's right. When we do that good action, we are personally the ones that benefit when we do an action for wanting to please Allah. That's what's so beautiful. We fully benefit from that good action. We get so much benefit from that good action. And that's something to always remind ourselves of, that we are the ones so blessed to be able to benefit from that good action. That's right. So now let's look at another point from our kutbah. In another excerpt from the kutbah, it says, Fear Allah like him who listened to good advice and bowed before it. When he committed sin, he admitted it. When he felt fear, he acted virtuously. When he understood, he rushed towards good acts. When he believed, he performed virtuous acts. When he was asked, to take lesson from the happenings of this world, he did take the lesson. When he was asked to stay away from evil, he did. What are some of the positive qualities of taqwa that we need to have based on this kutbah? These are parts of the kutbah that are talking about having taqwa. What are some of these positive qualities that are being described? Any guesses? Any thoughts that come to your mind? Very good. Because your question is how taqwa helps us. So taqwa helps us when we're conscious, have that consciousness of Allah, our intention changes, and really it helps us to gain closeness to Him. That's right. So it shows us how taqwa helps us and how this person, when you fear Allah, taking the good advice, very good, believed He performed virtuous acts, excellent. Listen to good and admit when you do a sin. That's right. When you do a sin, right away rush to ask for forgiveness. Just make good choices. Very good. Because just what taqwa is, that's right. That God consciousness at all times it talks about. Very good. Those are very good. There's everyone. So now let's now let's have a story. That's right. It shows us how we can adopt how we can adopt taqwa. So the title of this story is Whose Pleasure Shall We Seek? So the story begins by saying 
Many, many years ago, there lived a man named Luqman. He was not a prophet, but he was very wise. He was an African who was caught as a slave and sold in another country. Luqman was so wise and respected that a surah in the Quran is called by his name. Chapter 31. He gave good advice to his children. His advice is equally good for all the children of the world even today. Once Luqman said to his son, O oh son, do not tie your heart in seeking the pleasure of people. You are not likely to succeed. Do not pay attention to what people say. Instead, Tell yourself always to seek the pleasure of God. Luqman wanted this lesson to be always remembered, never to be forgotten. He thought of a way. He then told his son to ride a donkey. The son obeyed. The father followed behind on foot. They traveled in this way for some distance. After some distance, they came across a group of people. Seeing the son on the donkey, one of them said, What an impolite and bad boy! The old father is walking on foot. The young son is comfortably riding on the donkey. This is no manner to show respect to one's father. Father and son heard this. The son came down from the donkey. Luqman rode on, on the animal. After some time, they came across another group of people. On seeing the father riding the donkey, the elder of the group said, Oh, you old man, this is not the way to bring up a son. You make him walk in the hot sun while you sit comfortably on the donkey. Luqman paid attention to what the people said. He came down from the donkey. Both father and son walked on foot. The donkey walked in front. They went a little further. People seeing them said, How foolish you are! You walk behind a donkey? Why don't you ride it? Luqman and his son once again accepted what the people said. They both rode the donkey and went further. They came across a river. There was a bridge to be crossed. Some people were sitting there. They saw Luqman and his son riding the donkey. One of them said, It is very unkind and cruel of you two to ride on the poor donkey. The little animal can hardly take all your burden. So taking this advice, Luqman and his son dismounted from the donkey. They traveled a little distance further. Looking very lovingly, Luqman said to his son, You have heard and seen what the people said. It must have assured you by now that whatever you do or whichever way you move, one, one is not able to please the people of the world. He pointed at the, follow, at the flowing river and added, A person can build a wall across the river. It will stop the flow of the river, but it is not possible to shut the mouth of the people from criticism. Very clear similar is the case in our world today. We think about it, our tongue that we have has no bones. It can speak even without thought. There are many opinions as there are people in the world. It is very bad to find fault with the other person, especially when he is doing something good. 
a person can feel very hurt when he listens to all the tongues that talk loose. To avoid getting hurt by loose talk, a person can train himself. A person can discipline himself to think. By thinking, he can know what is wrong and avoid it. When a person is sure that what he is doing will please his master, Allah, then he must never worry what others speak. So what are some thoughts that come to your mind about this story and this reflection? So you already see wonderful reflections coming up. Our mouth can be used in a lot of different ways. That's right. Depending on how we control it, very good. We have to be careful of what we say that's right and careful of what we do. That's, that's very important for us to always remember. And it also tells us how one person controls someone else. That's right. If somebody keeps listening to somebody else, something we need to be aware of. That's right. We have to control our tongue and be very careful. That's right. Sometimes we think and we think and we say something bad. That's right. Sometimes even without realizing it, that's right. And sometimes we don't think and we say something bad. That's right. There's something always to be aware of and just to reflect on that part of the tongue that our tongue doesn't have a muscle. It's so easy for us sometimes to say things and not fully think about it. That's right. Allah blessed us all with intellect, which is something we looked at last time. So it's very important for us to always use our intellect when we hear information or somebody tells us something. That's right. We should always make sure we are pleasing Allah. And we are always treating people the way we want to be treated. That's very good. Those are excellent reflections, everyone. So now let's take a look at another part of the kutwa. It continues with the positive qualities of taqwa. So in this part of the kutwa, it says, when he responded to the call of Allah, he leaned towards him. When he turned back to evil, he repented. When he followed, he almost imitated. And when he was shown the right path, he saw it. So this excerpt that we're looking for, looking at is, uh, is another excerpt from Kutbah number 83. It's a very, very long Kutbah. So we're looking at bits and pieces of this amazing kutbah. So this is from kutbah number 83. So what are some of the positive qualities that are mentioned that we can try to apply within our lives when we read this? And if you're not sure, some of these key points have also been in bold to make it easier to detect. What are some of these positive qualities? That's right. It talks about how we repent it because sometimes in our life we do make mistakes, but it's so, so important for us to ask for repentance and to get back on that straight path. That's right. So that repentance is so important because we are so blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so, so forgiving that even if we go off track and we make a mistake, so important for us to ask for forgiveness and get back on the right path and continue following commands of Allah and doing good. That's right, we responded to the call. That's right, it almost reminds us of praying on time and also responding like to the call of an, an azan and starting to pray very good. Importance of asking for forgiveness responding to the call of Allah, that's right. So important to be aware of that call and have that awareness. Very good. Excellent. Let us continue. So now, when ex now let's take a look at a connection from the Holy Quran. So if we take a look at Surah Yusuf, Yunus, Surah 10, Ayat, 61 it says 
You do not engage in any work, neither do you recite any part of the Quran, nor do you perform any deed without our being witnesses over you when you are engaged therein. What are some thoughts that come to your mind when you read this verse? Excellent. Very good. Allah al-Basir. Very good. It's a beautiful connection you made to the Asma al-Husna names of Allah. Excellent. Any other reflections of what you can learn from this verse? That Allah is always watching you. Very good. The importance to do good. Very good. That's right. Allah can see us as well. Allah is aware of everything that we do. So now something else for us to think about. This is another incentive that encourages us to do good action. Let's talk about the rewards that we get when we do good actions for the sake of pleasing Allah and having that God consciousness. So there are two types of rewards that we are able to get when we have this God consciousness within our life. The first reward is known as Al-Husna. It means the best and the finest reward. He will give in return to good deeds performed that which is the finest in terms of perfection. The happiness it brings, the state and rank it takes the human being to. So we will get, it refers to a high, high position in the hereafter. And some say it refers to paradise. So if we are able to do good, good actions throughout our life, and make sure that they are done through full God consciousness and sincere intention, Allah will inshallah give us the best and the finest reward, which is known as Al-Husna. The second reward type of reward that we are inshallah able to achieve is known as Ziyada, which is translated as more or extra. So the, this word has been interpreted in many different ways. One of them involves when we get something that is more than what the deed deserves and something additional. In other interpretations, it says a reward that is multiplied by 10 times, such as, as it says in Surah the 6, I had 160, or even 700 times. The Holy Prophet explains in a hadith and says, those who perform good actions are the people of Tawheed. Husna is paradise and Ziyada is looking at the face of Allah being in his presence. So we can see in this that there is so, so much reward that we are able to be able to achieve by doing this, these good actions and having that God consciousness. These are some of the rewards that inshallah we are able to achieve. So when we perform it, this it also reminds us that when we perform these good deeds, there's good deeds, there's also the incentive of a reward that is beyond what we can ever imagine. That's right, depending on that action, our intention and everything. La inshallah knows best on how much reward we can get for it. So this can help to even motivate us even more to be having, having that God consciousness throughout our life. Because Allah has blessed us with so many examples in the Holy Quran where he tells us about all these the rewards that we are able to achieve, which is so amazing depending on that action, what the kind of reward we can get to even make it more inspiring and motivating for us. It shows us how lucky we are to have such an amazing Allah that is so generous beyond anyone or anything we can imagine and how we can get so much more than what we actually even deserve.
to write, inshallah, our goal is to pray to Allah that inshallah, just, yeah, inshallah be able to reach heaven. Good. So it's amazing. It's something we always need to remind ourselves of at all times. So now let's take up a look at some of more verses from the Holy Quran. Like build on this concept since we looked at so much on the reward. What are some practical ways the ways to help us be God conscious based on the Hadith of the Holy Prophet? Peace be upon him. Before I, before we look at that, will we be doing questions like last time? Yes, we will, inshallah, be doing questions like last time. And this time, the questions are a little bit more trickier since I know everyone here is super, super smart. So the questions this time that we're going to be doing are going to be a little bit more challenging, the poll questions. Okay, so since everyone is so, so smart in this group. So based on the hadith of the Holy Prophet, it has been encouraged to told people that it is important to recite Surat al Aza, number number thirty, Surah Azab, which is Surah number thirty-three, ayat seventy. Often, that has been encouraged a lot, as well as adopting the clothes of taqwa. Same way it has been discussed in Surah seven, ayat twenty-six. That has been highly, highly encouraged. So when we look at Surat Al-Azab, Surah 33, Ayat 70, it says, O oh, you who believe, be God conscious and speak upright words. Any thoughts that come to your mind when you hear this? Oh, you who believe, be God conscious and speak upright words. What could we be talking about when we hear the term upright words? Something we may not be aware of. Speak properly, good guess. Be polite, very good. So it's important for us to remember. The words convey a message to the he to the person hearing it and can, can communicate something important, even life-changing idea ideas. Words are very powerful tools that we have for spreading good and staying away from evil. So according to that verse, we believers should always have taqwa and speak upright words. So an upright word is a word that is firm and consistent. It is a word that is based on truth, which is a strong foundation. It is a word that does not let falsehood and wrong things seep through it and weaken it. That is what an upright word is. And the ability to speak upright words comes from faith in Allah and the desire to please him through using the tongue in the right way that we talked about. This God consciousness, which should be a natural result of faith in Allah, gives the strength and the courage to speak upright words. There can be no fear or concern about people. Upright words are only for the sake of Allah. That is what makes those words so, so powerful and be able to be more powerful than other words. So the next part it says adopting the clothing of taqwa. What could that possibly mean? Clothing of taqwa. So just to repeat, upright words are words that are firm and consistent, that are based on truth. An ability to speak those strong, powerful words that are based on truth comes from Allah and the desire to please Him when we speak words like that. Hopefully that answers your question. So what is clothing of taqwa? Any guesses? What could it mean? And why is it so important? So first, if we take a look at Surah 7, 
Ayah 26. What is this verse saying? This verse says, O children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts as an adornment, but the clothing of piety, that is best. What is this clothing of taqwa? What does this clothing of taqwa mean? Cover ourselves from bad, good o'clock. Very good, good o'clock. So this verse talks about clothing in the spiritual form of clothing that both conceals the defects of the human being and makes him spiritually beautiful. The clothing of taqwa that it described protects the human being and becomes a barrier to the negative things around us. The clothing of taqwa is the best of all clothing. It envelopes the human being in the spiritual light and helps him with his progress to reach higher levels. This is really beautiful now. This is from Imam Zainul Abedin in Saifat Sajadiya, Dua number 20. He states, O oh Allah, adorn me with the adornment of the righteous and clothe me in the ornaments of the God-fearing. It's important to remind ourselves to always to have this beautiful clothing of taqwa. And remember, the same way how when we wear clothes, make sure it covers our prior parts, covers, and we look good and modest. Think about this clothing of taqwa in the spiritual self. How we want to beautify this clothing of taqwa that we have. I think for us to always think about it. So now... Time for some questions. So let's do some poll questions now. So the first poll question is, so that's it for the stories of for now. First question is, which member of the Ahlul Bayt had said, the best of mankind is he who adores worship and embraces it. He loves it with the heart, performs it with the body, and makes time for it. Then he is not greatly concerned about the world, whether he is in difficulty or in need. Any guesses on who had said this? Oh, seems like, looks like we have some mixed responses on that one. We have some people saying it was the Holy Prophet. Some people saying it was Imam Ali. It was also very high in Imam Hassan. Well, it looks like we have a lot of mixed answers for this one. And 30 seconds. The correct answer is... Is the Holy Prophet had said it. So good job. Seems like a lot of people, the majority, are right as well as excellent guesses from everyone. So now the next question is Who remembers which verse of Surah Al Azad state? Oh, you who believe, be God conscious and speak upright words. You can see these questions are a little trickier and involve more thinking than last ones. Well, it looks like so for the majority is saying verse 70. And the correct answer is, you can cast your vote, please cast it quickly.
The correct answer is verse 70. Excellent. Good job. And now the next question is, Which dua from, from dua Makaramala Klaq shows us that when we recite, if we want to adopt the clothing of taqwa? Sorry, no Makaramala Klaq, Seifat is the one. Which dua from Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, Seifat is the one? We should recite, so sorry. Not Makara Mulaka, Seifate Sejadia. Seifate Sejadia, which Dua had said, O oh Allah, adorn me with the adornment of the righteous and clothe me in the ornament of the God fearing. From Seifate Sejadia, which Dua number was it? It was from Dua was from dua number, so everyone's saying dua 10, from dua number 20. From Seifat Sejadia, dua number 20, that is the dua that we recite if we want to adopt the clothing of taqwa. So very good, excellent. So if you missed any of these slides, or you want to catch up on the recording or anything, all of them can be found on the website www.academyofislam.com. We thank them for making it possible today for us to learn and to take this course. On the website, you will also see recordings and information about on site courses, weekly Quran reflections, publications, information about retreats, camps and so many un wonderful resources that will also be there. And you can also follow them on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So inshallah, this presentation has helped you to gain more knowledge and also to be able to see the beautiful jewels in Najul Balaga and help us, inshallah, to gain closeness to Allah. So at the end, when you exit this presentation, there will be a short little survey that will pop up. If you wouldn't mind taking a few seconds to fill out super short, just a few questions, that will help us to inshallah gain more information for inshallah future courses. That's right. The bookmark will also be found on the website. On the website, there will be a link that will have the course details. But the bookmark, for those that are asking, I will share it with you right now. But it will also be there as well. So the bookmark link, I'm going to be sharing it at the bottom. So right here, if you notice, on the chat screen, it says, click the link to download the positive affirmation bookmark. You can click that and that will give you the direct link for the bookmark. But all the slides, recordings, everything will be found on that website. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this series. And inshallah, it all helps us to gain closeness to Allah. So thank you very much, everyone.